Hey, what's going on everybody over at Hustle Buddies? Today we're gonna do a really short tutorial uh, going back over how to use Keepa, um, some tricks for it, what to look at, why we use it, and all of that, okay? So stay tuned. Now, um, a, a lot of people in our Facebook group are very new sellers. We just had a huge influx of new people join, and a lot of people are asking about Keepa. So if you go to either Keepa.com if you wanna check it out, or hey, if you wanna support us and use our link, that's awesome, I will put our affiliate link to them down in the comments. Um, you can check out Keepa. Keepa is what you use to judge if a product is selling and all the historical data for it. If you're not using Keepa, you're sort of driving blind when it comes to um, arbitrage on Amazon. It's possible, um, but Keepa is really, it's the standard tool, everybody uses it, okay? So let's dive into sort of what it is and how to use it. So first off, Keepa is a website. Now they did just come out with an app a couple weeks ago. The app is still a little bit glitchy. Um, so normally we tell people, if you are trying to sort of do things the hard way, you can pull up either um, a browser window on your phone and just type in a UPC there. Or if you're using uh, Inventory Lab, which is another tool that we highly recommend. Inventory Lab comes with Scoutify and you can integrate Keepa with Scoutify. We did a whole video of that over on our YouTube um, for how to integrate those two things. Um, so Keepa, what, what it's showing you, if you pull up an item, it's showing you all of the historical data. There is a ton of different data points that you can look at. I mean, if you turned all these things on, your screen's gonna start looking pretty messy, okay? So what I usually recommend to people at the very beginning, because you're gonna kind of feel overwhelmed, there's gonna be a lot of different lines going on, go ahead and just turn everything off, all right? The first thing that you should be looking at is the sales rank, okay? So this green bar right here, if you use nothing else in Keepa, you've gotten 90% of your value from it, just looking at the sales rank history. This is why Keepa is used so prevalently, okay? so. What sales rank history tells us is the history of the sales rank. Okay, kind of obvious. Sales rank, if you're looking at an item and you see something, uh, an item, let's, I'll use this book as an example over here. Um, so let's say I'm looking at this book and I scan it on this day and I see that it has a sales rank of 786,000. You can see that there on my screen, okay? If I was scanning that at Goodwill and I saw this book for 786,000 in rank, I might buy it, but there's a decent chance that I would also pass on that because that's a pretty high rank. If I was only basing my purchase off of the sales rank, which is what some people do, um, I probably would have passed on this. And this is a major flaw with either just using sales rank and using sales rank charts. I know people talk about like, oh, this is in the top 1% of the category or it's in the top 5%. I don't personally recommend that because of this, this is, this is the flaw with that. You're only looking at a snapshot and the sales rank changes every 15 minutes. So if you scan it now, 15 minutes from now, it could be completely different. And that's the case right here. So if you scan it at Goodwill and you see it's 786,000 and you pass, and then the person right behind you scans it 30 minutes later and, uh, or the next day, and they see that it's ranked, what was that? 154,000, okay? they're probably gonna clear the shelf. I mean, if there's like 20 of those books, they're buying all of them because that's an amazing rank for a book. So just basing it off of today's sales rank, you're gonna run into a lot of issues. You wanna look at the historical sales rank and you wanna see if there is movement. So this is an example where this doesn't have a fantastic sales rank, but we can see that it is moving. It's moving slow enough that you can actually count the number of times that it has sold. So down here we see this was back in November. Um, November, probably December it sold. So since the beginning of December, it sold one time, you can see that drop, two times, that's another drop, three times, four times, five, maybe six, it gets, Keep is not perfect, they can't track every single sale, they just track the sales rank changes and they can only update so frequently. So um, there's a couple sales happening here, I'll say there's two of them, we're just guesstimating. Um, so that was six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 ish. So this book has sold roughly 12 times since December. That's not an amazing rank, but that's not a bad rank. That's something where if I was at a garage sale or a Goodwill and I'm trying to pick this up uh, as a used book and, and it was profitable, yeah, I would probably snag one or two of those, um, as, assuming it's profitable, because I can see that historically this is selling once every couple weeks, all right? So 
you might come into another item. So I'll, I'll pull this item up. This is actually a grill that uh, I just bought for Alicia for her birthday. Um, so you can see this sales rank. This sales rank is moving all over the place. You, you can't really guesstimate the exact number of sales that's happening here. And I want to pause there for a second. There's a lot of programs that will try and guesstimate the number of sales. Uh, Keepa will give you an estimated number of sales. Jungle Scout will give you an estimated number of sales. There's all sorts of things that'll estimate the number of monthly sales. It, it's all completely useless. There's no serious seller that I've ever met who puts any merit in those. Basically, all they're doing is they're trying to count the drops um, of the Keepa chart. And you can sort of do that yourself. And because it's not perfect and because multiple sales can happen, maybe someone bought 10 of it, maybe um, a bunch of people bought at the exact same time and Keepa thought it was just one single sale. I mean, there's, there's a lot of mistakes with the system, so you can't track the exact sales unless, again, it's a very slow moving thing like that book where you can obviously see the drops. This is moving so much, you don't need to know the exact amount that this is selling. You just know that this is selling and it's selling a lot. So if this is a potential replen, I might buy one to five of these to start. If it sells for a profitable price, awesome. I'll go back and maybe I'll do a second test buy for 15 to 20 items, all right? And then build your way up from there. So you don't need to trust the data, just do test buys and build your way up if you're finding a replenishable item. If you're buying a clearance item or it's just a one-off, yeah, this is a solid enough sales rank that I would probably clear the shelf, uh, assuming, again, that this was all profitable. Now, there is some other data that you can look um, at with Keepa. You can see if Amazon is in stock and if they have the buy box and all of that. So this orange indicates Amazon is in stock, Amazon's selling it, um, and you can see their price up there, 529. So Amazon is in stock and they are selling it quite a bit. Um, there's been a number of times where they've been out of stock. You can see these white areas like the orange stripes. So Amazon is coming in and out of stock. So Amazon isn't the only person that's able to sell this. Obviously other people can come in and make some profit on it. Okay. Um, the other thing I like to look at and I'll, I'll pull up just a different example so you can see some different graphs. Um, another thing I like to look at, let me turn most of this stuff off is the buy box. That's that pink line right there. So this is who has the buy box. This, you can assume that this is probably the price that you're going to have to price yours at. So it, you want to calculate your profitability based on this number. Okay. And I like to look historically because maybe there's a big price surge or a big price drop and it's not an accurate portrayal of uh, the historical price of this item. Yes, maybe I can sell this item for $32.99, like on April 22nd, but normally you can see over here and in the past, normally this product is going for $22.95. So yeah, if, if you make an extra 10 bucks, awesome, but I wouldn't count on that. I would not go deep on this item if I was looking at it on April 22nd and I saw, oh wow, the price has just gone up a, a, a ton. I mean, I'll get some, but I'm not going to get a lot and I'm not going to assume that I'm safely going to get $32.99 for this item. I'm going to plan for the worst, which is $22.95 and hope for the best, that $32.99. Okay. All right. So another interesting uh, little thing you can look at is the new offer count. So this is interesting because you can see how many other sellers are selling something. This particular item, when you see the, the number of sellers drop, so there was, let me turn this review count off. Um, so you see the number of sellers drop. There were about 20 people selling it, and that's when it was like $22, $23. Then you see this drop off. The number of sellers drops drastically. So 20 people selling it here to six people selling it here. When less people are selling it, uh, the price goes up. That's the law, supply and demand. The, there's an axis. Supply and demand will always find the middle ground for what the customer and the uh, providers will price it at. Okay, the market will adjust itself. The market will always correct itself. That's, that's how the market works. Okay, if there are less sellers, then the price will go up. If there are more sellers, the price will go down. It's not because people are tanking the price. It's not other people ruining your business. It's just that's supply and demand. That's how it works. Okay, so that is most of the um, interesting information, the useful information. If you want to look at other things, awesome. Like you can look uh, historically, let's see what, how this product does over the course of a year, or you can see lifetime or just the past week, or there's lots of other data. You can see 
FBM offers versus FBA offers? Or are there people selling this used? Maybe you're trying to sell a book and you want to see like historical used prices. So it's got all of that data. This is a phenomenal tool. Every, every serious arbitrage seller I know uses this without an exception. I have never met a single serious arbitrage seller who does not use Keepa. It's just, it's just what you use, okay? Um, there's some alternatives that are okay. Um, I know Helium has sort of a free alternative um, and Camel 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 sort of has a free alternative, but I don't know anyone who doesn't use Keepa. So I would prefer to <laughs> use what everyone else does, okay? Call me a sheeple, but <laughs> there's a lot of other smart people out there. Might as well do what they do. All right, so that's sort of um, the basics of how you use it. You might come across some other weird things. Maybe you see a Keepa chart where it's completely blank. Normally that means it's either a brand new item, which in this case it is. So it says it's existed for negative one days. I don't know how that works, but so this, is, this would be a brand new item. It hasn't sold, so there's no data on it yet. This would be a pretty risky buy. I usually stay away from things like this. Um, or you might see this if something just hasn't ever sold. Maybe it existed for three years, but it hasn't sold. All right, that would also be something to stay away from. Um, or you might find charts that look like this where it was selling not too well in the past, but it just picked up a, a bunch. So maybe, maybe it's a seasonal thing. Maybe someone's running ads to it. You can kind of figure it out from there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's sort of the basics of how I use it, how um, I would recommend um, looking at it initially when you're just getting the basic overview. Again, if you, if you only look at sales rank, I'll turn everything else off. If you only look at sales rank, that's 90% of what this program is doing for you. If you're not using this, you're crippling yourself because you're basing your decision off of this 15 minute window of a sales rank. So again, the book, if it was ranked almost a million, I'd probably pass. If it was ranked 100,000, I'd buy them all. But neither one of those is accurate. It's historically sort of in the middle. So I'll buy a couple because I know it'll sell about once a week. All right, hopefully that helps. Let me know in the comment section what, uh, what, what is your favorite way to use Keepa? What are some tricks that you've learned with that? Or what are some other short tutorials like this that you would like me to do next for you guys? I know there's a lot of new sellers. People are learning a lot of new, uh, new skills that they're unfamiliar with and it can seem like a lot. So I wanna do these more hands-on tutorials um, every couple weeks to try to give you some really in-depth use and hands-on use of some of the tools we use. All right, we will see you out there, guys. Hustle on.